My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I hope you want to make friends. I'm just trying to help you make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to explain, give you some context. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me, at Jim Kramer. The seven have spoken, and now we're done. Yet now that we've heard from NVIDIA, every one of the Magnificent Seven have reported, and it's time to grade them. Now, I know, I had plenty of earnings to go around. The averages can't be obscured even by the big ones. Dow advancing 48 points. This be inching up 0.13%. NASDAQ, of course, dipping 0.32%. But we have to slice to the trillion-dollar chase and decide which companies deserve the valuations and which, if any, might be pretenders. Let's start with NVIDIA, which delivered yet another monster quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing beat, raised quarter, powered by insane demand for high-powered artificial intelligence chips. Even better, they gave you a great forecast for the current quarter. Talking about $24 billion in revenue, Wall Street was looking for around 22. Visionary CEO Jensen Wong says that accelerated computing and generative AI have hit the tipping point, with demand surging worldwide. Oh, the long guys were out for these guys in the end, and lots of people were worried that supply would outstrip demand, destroy their gross margins. It was just the opposite. As I told you last night, you need to think of Jensen Wong as Taylor Swift of business, a long-term visionary with terrific current and future products, a true powerhouse in name and in deed. I say, own it, don't trade it. Overall, I think the Magnificent Seven truly did acquit themselves well. Some of these mega cap companies aced the report cards, getting what I can only describe as sumas, at least in their orals, meaning the conference call. Let's start with the most definitive suma of all. Yes, the trillionaire that is Amazon. Here's a company that had been spending too much money to build out two-day shipping to the point where it was considered something of a slowdown story. Oh, not this quarter. Go to the head of the class, Amazon. They ended up laying off a ton of high-cost high talent at headquarters while figuring out how to get your packages faster and cheaper to you. Fewer people plus quicker, less expensive delivery equals a gross margin bonanza. Meanwhile, Amazon's advertising business is on fire and its web services back in double-digit growth mode. Oh, by the way, thank you, Jeff Bezos, for ending your 50 million share sell program. And you're welcome, Dow Jones, for booting Walgreens and welcoming Amazon. Great call. How about Meta? Oh, this will be the quarter that Suma Mark Zuckerberg became cool. I know. I, kind of inconceivable. But have you tried the sold-out smart Ray-Bans where you can listen, talk, messages, and snap pictures that go right into your Instagram? Have you been in the new Quest 3 VR headset, which to me is kind of like Jack Kirby's fourth world. Yes, that cool. Meanwhile, the core business is incredible. I'm slapping a $100 billion valuation on WhatsApp, even without fees. As we rue the denouement of linear TV, we realize that advertising has forever gone to where it must go, to the people who actually want the product. And you can only do that online with the right technology. One word, inference. Instagram is the king of inference. Hence, the gigantic NVIDIA bill Zuckerberg must pay to get the job done. Summa. How about Magna? My illustrious college grade. All right, that belongs to Microsoft, which would have scored Summa if we hadn't recently heard a cacophony of mixed views about Copilot and AI Get Gateway. Hey, look, after an initial five-star breakout ranking, I'm not sure what to make of the suboptimal responses of late to Copilot, given that I think it's incredibly easy to use, but maybe I'm a kind of an outlier. Either way, Microsoft's cloud business, Azure, is so hot. Just, I mean, like, smoking hot. You don't need to worry about this one. Just like Windows became the enterprise godsend to Apple's early dominance with the consumer, I am betting Copilot will eventually become the AI gold standard. We know this because CFO Amy Hood, who is so good, put a stake in the ground and told us that people love the product. If there's a tussle about how well it's being received, I'm going with Hood. She's a straight shooter. And she's got the numbers. The gripers don't. Who else? Well, Apple didn't get the highest honors, no, but it did deserve the post-earnings regrading in its stock as the company managed to do the iPhone sales while continuing to rack up excellent service revenues. China remains the issue, though. And we've seen a pickup in some things selling in China, but I don't want to get too excited there. What people didn't understand, what they missed, what they'll continue to miss is Apple's Vision Pro. I know. Okay, let's put them out there. It's expensive. It's boutique. It doesn't move the needle. There are only a couple hundred thousand of them. Only Apple early adopters will buy it. The headset hurts. How do you work it anyway? Which I say, have you tried one? Yeah, I figured. Open your mind to what Masters of the Air would look like in the B-17, getting hit by flak, measurements blown by, as you try to work the Norton bomb site. 
real life. That's the Vision Pro. Your pictures in panorama, your keyboard in the air, your knowledge that besides Macs, Apple Plus, and Hulu, the other streaming services are going to fold because they'll end up being too much demand. And who knows if you can one day call up the new Apple Sports app free and press buttons for a big Miami MLS game and be blown away. The cynicism about this product is only equal by the sales and hard to find availability. Although we heard from the great Eamon Javers about how they have it in Russia and they're paying a lot more than that. I, I thought that store was a, that was innate demand. All right. So will it be the biggest thing? No, but it's in the right direction. Still, Apple's only an honorable mention. Why? Because China's just not so hot and Apple's India business is still in its infancy. Can't grow fast enough. Retail infrastructure just not there. And the PRC weakness is a little breathtaking. Still, I say own it, don't trade it. But in terms of the Magnificent Seven, it was in the middle of the pack this earnings season. Alphabet's a true quandary. Two quarters ago, Google Cloud hit some sort of wall, and the whole company's numbers were just widely panned. It was a wholesale nightmare. This time, Google Cloud got its mojo back. But the far more important advertising business was a retail nightmare. The house of pain. Yeah, I mean, talk about hitting a wall. I mean, this was just awful. It was nasty because advertising was very strong for Amazon and Meta. Hey, maybe Google isn't as useful as it used to be. It was a riddle wrapped into a mystery of an enigma. The soft quarter gives Alphabet a rude general studies grade. Given all the high-powered Stanford types working out there, it's a rude awakening, isn't it? I'd like to get more positive, but that'd be hard to do when YouTube and search are both advertising-based. Nothing big enough to make up for that, even if Gemini's a hit. I actually found it depressing. Last but not least, earning a gentleman's see, yeah, Tesla, which, by the way, is nowhere near the trillion-dollar mark anymore, to the point where it's now weighs in below. <laughs> weighs in, you like that? Couldn't resist. Weighs in. Did it again, in case you missed it. Eli Lilly. Oh, the indignance. Anyway, oddly, I want to hold back judgment for Tesla. Or actually, I want to hold back the student. With a new model coming out, I just hope we don't get a dreaded gap year from Tesla. This quarter simply didn't merit distinction, so I'm not giving it out freely, given even to Elon Musk, who rivals Jensen Wong as the brightest of this generation's titanic business people, but is never confused with Taylor Swift. I don't like basing anything on a single quarter, even as the late Andy Grove, the toughest and meanest business person I ever met, said that when he ran Intel, it was perfectly legit to grade the company by the quarter. Here's the bottom line. To me, a longer-term vision is what's required. Too bad make or break is all that we ever heard during earnings season. Some of those breaks are buying opportunities, and nobody's ever made, at least not among the real winners. The good guys are always ready to play, and one day just does not matter that much. John in Florida, John. Thank you for taking my call, Jim. Of course, I've John. I've got a two-part question on Zoitis. Okay. In Wall Street parlance, where do you put it? Is it a pharma company or something else? They also missed their last uh, uh, quarter earnings pretty substantially. What are your thoughts going forward? Yeah, you know, that was a miss, and it did bum me out because I think that Kristen Peck and Zoetis are great. It is a healthcare company for animals, both uh, livestock, but, of course, just companion animals, and it's a great company. I, I think it was a, I think it was one off. I think it's a good stock, though. Let's go to Bob in New York. Bob. Yes, Jim. Bob. This is Bob from New York. And first of all, I want to thank you for taking my call. Um, I want to know what you think about the stock. Micron Technology. Okay, well, this is MU. Uh, now MU. All right, this is you know, yeah, I like to play with an open hand. I think Sanjay Marocha is one of the greats in the business. The stock bottomed when he said it would bottom, which is before the turn in the actual business. I was actually more bullish than Sanjay. I, I told Sanjay, you got to get more bullish, man. You know how your stock acts. I told him I knew it better than he did. That was pure hubris and wrong. But anyway, I was right, and the stock is still going higher. Yes, I say when it comes to Apple and when it comes to NVIDIA, just in case you didn't know, own it, don't trade it. To me, a longer-term vision is what's required in this market, even though that is very hard to find. Too bad this make-or-break stuff is what we hear, because there are no breaks and there are no makes. It's just great, consistent business people. Oh, man, money tonight. Home Depot, or the death spot, as I like to call it, reported earnings yesterday. You know, it's a very important company. We've got to spend more time on it. I'm breaking down the numbers and realizing that it's not make or break. Then we have a make or break real estate investment trust coming on about the dividends. And then we're going to sit down with the make or break voucher loan. And you know what? I need a break from the make or break because what really matters is finding great companies and owning them. Stay with Kramer.
Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.